the design process of F1 in schools starts with the research of the car. So that's looking into Formula One cars or looking into past cars in the schools or other schools worldwide. Look at the good past cars. You just have to look at the worst cars. You don't want to be using an idea that doesn't do that well on track. It could look really great on computer-aided design and just not work out for you in real life. Also researching scientific principles for the aerodynamics. We looked at things like golf balls and from that we were able to learn about things like the Coanda effect, which is to do with turbulent and laminar airflow. You've got to look at the modern advances in technology. So we were going to use pentagliders wheels, but we decided to make our own because we had new technology available to us. The first thing is to do is to get your initial ideas do some freehand sketches, that's always the best way. I put together something called a First Ideas Portfolio. So it was a booklet of about 30 pages long, just brainstorming ideas of what could work on the car. Once you start designing concepts, you have to put a time constraint on, on how long you're going to spend with the concept stage because a lot of time has to be spent later on in developing the final concept. For our team, we developed around 35 uh, initial concepts, all totally different from each other. I think I will cause about 100 sketches, 150. 50 sketches so it takes a long time. You have to put a lot of design concepts and research and development into it. But it's easy to get carried away with it because a lot of people have a lot of ideas. By working together as a team those hundreds of designs you probably came up with could narrow down to 10, 20, something that was manageable to be able to develop further. It was vital that we develop things in depth rather than um, develop lots of things. And that's where other members of the team come in to say, right, stop developing concepts. You then go and you develop some of them concepts using CAD, so computer-aided design. Computer-aided design allows the machine to manufacture a virtual image of the car without you having to manually chisel away at a block of wood. When I first started the competition, I didn't know how to use CAD at all. started off by having a few lessons and for the first few weeks we just concentrated on learning the software and then the more you use it, the more you get to know it. Without computer-aided design, you won't be able to manufacture anything to a good standard. So it's really useful in the competition. The key things to consider are obviously the um, aerodynamics, the bearings of wheels, how you're going to make the airflow around the car, is the car in the right weight. But as long as you can get these right, the others will kind of fall in place. The rules and regulations shouldn't limit your design. Uh, they shouldn't limit your creativity. But all of the ideas that you come up with should be moulded to fit within the rules and regulations. The life skills you gain from the design stage of the car have a lot to do with science and maths as you're creating dimensions and using technology programmes. What you learn in the classroom in an engineering class is fantastic, but being able to use the FNS schools programme and you could apply that to a situation, to applying the knowledge that you learn in class to a car. It's about learning the different tools and different processes to actually be able to develop the design you have in your head and uh, get it into the physical model.